this video is going to be a bit lighter than the last one, but this is something that is also very dear to my heart. It's graphic design, and in particular, book design. So today I thought I'd share with you some of my favourites from my bookshelf. First up, there's this lovely book. The front is these holes like that. It's got photography, illustrations, food, and vintage fashion. This book is beautifully produced. It's got these very papery pages. What I mean by that is that the paper is quite thick and it's quite textured as well. And it's got a ribbon bookmark. Next up there's one of my favourite sewing books and that is Love at First Stitch by Tilly Warns. Tilly runs a fabulous blog about sewing and particularly beginners sewing. It's called Tilly and the Buttons. It's got in-depth instructions on how to make the garments in this book as well as photographs outlining each step. It has great typography and use of colour. Then of course the garments themselves are just gorgeous. I've made a couple of these. It's so easy to follow and such a joy to work with. I will link her blog down below because She's wonderful and you should all check her out, especially if you're interested in dressmaking. Next up is a book that I bought on impulse the other day. This one didn't even make it to the shelves in the bookshop where I work. It's called Rethink the Way You Live. What really struck me about it is, I don't know if you can see, but there is a hole <laughs> that goes right the way through the book. If I do that, I can see you. It's like the Very Hungry Caterpillar, but for adults. It has beautiful page layout and photography. Again, this very lovely textured and thick paper. Some pages that are transparent, like these ones, and just some really lovely photography and spaces. In terms of layout design, it's got so much inspiration and I can't wait to spend more time looking through it. I almost forgot to mention the spine as well is like that. And then these are like cardboard bits on there, as you can see there. And the whole thing is flush to the edges. Next up there's this one, it's Seraphine Pick, uh, who collected works up until I think about 2008. Seraphine Pick is a New Zealand artist, she's one of my favourite artists. Her paintings have so much detail and symbolism and there's always more to see in here. A lot of them are also very creepy and weird, like this one which is my particular favourite, but I can't quite figure out what's going on and that's the case with many of the pictures in here and that's why I think I really enjoy looking through it. Then there's this book, I think it's meant to be a children's book but it's great for adults as well. It's full of illustration and covers many of the countries in the world. I'll just show you the New Zealand page because that's the one most relevant to me. It gives you lots of little facts like what the most popular names are for girls and boys, capital, languages, population, all those kinds of things. But it's just done in a really fun way and I've learned a lot actually from flipping through this book. Last up in my non-fiction section is The Cello Suites by Eric Siblin. This is a gorgeous design from front cover to back. The spine is lovely, it looks gorgeous on my bookshelf, that's it all unfolded. Each section corresponds to one of the suites. So we have suite number one, a G major. And then the first chapter of that is the prelude, we go on to the Alamand, etc. On to my fiction titles, I have a couple of Murakamis. These are lovely and look gorgeous together on my bookshelf. Then there's a new Haruki Murakami book. I think one of the things that makes a really great book design is the element of surprise. And this really has that. You've got the plain white on the outside. But what really makes it special is that the inside is so much more colourful than the outside. Which is the reversal of what's expected. Then we have... A Golden Age. This has a lovely sort of central composition. I love the framing with the gold and I always love silhouettes on books. I think that's that's a really lovely design element. The Man with the Compound Eyes. Again, beautiful central composition. Title right in the middle. The whole aesthetic reminds me of Japanese prints, even though this is set in Taiwan. And it's a great example of a limited colour palette and also a fairly unexpected colour palette. I don't often see these colours put together on a book cover. Then some New Zealand examples, we've got Wake by Elizabeth Knox. This illustration was done by Dylan Horrocks, a Kiwi artist. It goes the whole way around. And then I couldn't not mention the luminaries. It's just gorgeous and lovely and the spine and the spine and my blue copy of it too is also very pretty but I do prefer this because it goes along with the whole historical fiction and Victorian time period. Oh and the back is the opposite, the moon's waxing and waning. This is also a really well produced book. It's massive so you'd think you'd have to break the spine but actually the spine stays fairly well intact even when you have it really wide open like that. 
Then I could not mention one of my favourite letterers and illustrators, Jessica Hitch, who did the Penguin Drop Cat series. All round, just stunning. I'm sure you've seen these in other places. She also did this Barnes & Noble leather band edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray, which has lovely green there and the spine is gorgeous. These are also really well typeset and the end papers are stunning. Current read, Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. This part here, the blue part, is all shiny and this is textured. On the topic of David Mitchell, we have Cloud Atlas. So, so lovely. I don't know why they've made a new edition of this. Again, very limited palette. I think it's just, it's just so well done. It's so simple. There's a bit of detail in here. Very pretty colours. Beautiful foiling. I don't think you can really improve on this. I've talked about the incarnations in another video. Beautiful illustration. And again, the element of surprise, you've got these end papers, even though this is a paperback which have details of the front. And Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake. This is another one with a surprise factor. The outside is lovely and it's got these shiny pixels on there as well. It's a spine and the other scary half face on that side. But this is it with the cover off. Fluorescent bunnies and the green of their eyes goes very nicely with the green in here and also the pink. So that probably gives you a bit of an idea of my taste in book covers. I do go out of my way to find the nicest editions that I can within my budget. So in general I like something that is a bit different, something I haven't seen before. If it has an element of surprise, something that brings just that little extra bit of joy, that's something I appreciate. In terms of fiction covers I tend to prefer illustrations or more graphic styles to photography and in non-fiction I like well done photography inside the book. Let me know in the comments what you think makes a great book design. Do you pay attention to the cover, to the spine, to the way it's typeset? If it's a hardback do you take the cover off and see what's underneath? I'm curious to see what other people's processes are when it comes to buying physical books. So once again thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!